G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now look at this kit. It is huge. This is the Airfix HMS Prince. It's about a 1180 scale uh, model of this fantastic ship of the line from the 17th century. Now, this is not an easy kit to find. I have been looking for years for this kit, probably about three years, trying to find it. Airfix do not release it anymore. You know, it's very hard to find a good kit, especially you can probably pick up one in the red box, but if you've watched my channel, I don't like the red box ones with the curry plastic and the molds are basically worn out. I try and get an old white box, or in this case, this is the period when Airfix was sort of owned by Hella and it basically came out of France, where hence it's um, got a little bit of French writing down here. Yeah, yeah, model kit, uh, model redo it. It's rather strange, isn't it? Redo it. Yes, we broke it. You put it back together. You ought to redo it. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry to any of the frogs watching. Tough. I make a lot of jokes on this channel. Now, I'd given up on this. Honestly, I'd given up on ever finding one of these kits, especially in good nick. And then, lo and behold. ScoMo, our Prime Minister here in Australia, uh, he gave us a Christmas bonus. Yeah, he slapped some money in my bank. I didn't even know I was getting it. And I went, oh, I went, okay, well, I've got this money, but all my bills are paid, budgets are good, and I'm actually looking pretty good for Christmas. So this is surplus. So what would I really like? What's something that I would really like? And I thought, well, I'll get on eBay and I'll have a poke around for some ship kits. Maybe some of those ones I've been trying to find will pop up. And lo and behold, two HMS prints from Airfix appear. Now one of them was an absolute bargain. It looked terrific and I was just about to hit the button. Then I read the fine print. Everything was there. The kit was terrific but it didn't have the hull halves. And this kit, if you have a look at the hull, that's the main thing. It's gilded. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely wonderful. And this kit was designed and measured from an Admiralty model. An exact model of the real ship. It's very rare that we actually have an exact spec for any of the ships from the 17th century. Normally we've only got paintings and drawings and artistic representations and they sort of look like what they should look like but I mean those people often made mistakes, not intentionally, but they kind of you know put a bit of artistic flair so the proportions aren't quite right. But we actually have a model basically from the designers and the shipwrights of this ship. And so Airfix went down there, measured this all up in the 60s, and produced an exact replica kit. So it is fantastic. And hence, all this gilding and everything, that's what was on the real ship. It's not fanciful. It's not made up. We finally have a sailing ship, ship of the line from the 17th century, that is spot on. At least as close as we think. How about that? So anyhow, enough of that. Who would like to see the inside of this box? Yep. You would? Okay, roll the music. Now this kit came all the way from uh, New Jersey, uh, which I think is in La America. Yes, well, it's, it's somewhere near New York, isn't it? I don't know. Anyhow, it went through there to California, and then it turned up here. It actually arrived much earlier than I thought. I didn't think I'd see this kit to the middle of January, uh, but it arrived <laughs> just after Christmas. So that was a Christmas miracle. Fantastic. Now, the box was brilliantly packed up. It had a brown paper bag, but inside that was a FedEx box, and inside that was bubble wrap, and then the kit box. So the kit box, for a change, was totally preserved. There was no bashing in the corners of it. Well, you know, like that uh, the last one I got from America, which was that Revel kit that came from Kentucky that looked like it had been used as a basketball in an ass-kicking competition, and it was totally wrecked. Big chunks hanging out of it. Luckily with that one, I didn't lose any parts. So let's see how we fared with this one, because Airfix is notorious for badly bagging sprues in one bag. Oh, right. So feigning surprise. I've actually opened this and had a look. Instructions are quite good nick. Nice and clean. No yellowing. So that's good. Now surprisingly because of the period <laughs> it's a page. It's a fold out page. That's it. There's your instructions. We'll get into that in more detail later. But basically the entire construction is just one big fold out plate and then um, page, not plate, what are you talking about Harry? And then you've got basically your rigging out. I'm going to show you something in a sec about these rat lines because 
they've actually made it incredibly easy. This is a period where they really helped you out. The sales are actually quite good, even though I wouldn't use that cost form sales. But you could, if you ever got hold of one of these, especially this one. I mean, Airfix has re-released this a number of times in a number of different configurations. But if you can get a white box, or you get an early one like this, which is basically, this is an early 80s, probably an 82 kit. That's not bad. The molds weren't, weren't worn out. The molds are still in good nick, and um, basically you still get the good source. Painting guide? <laughs> basically, they'd expect that if you're building this, you're probably going to look up the Admiralty model. I'll try and find a pic and put it up here, because I, I have the book of all the Admiralty models, and uh, this one is in there, and it is gorgeous. So you can see this kit matches the model from the Admiralty. Yeah. So uh, we'll have a look at the instructions later. You get some lovely big flags. And um, yeah, my friend Bill was getting a bit worried. He said, oh, it's got a Union Jack. And how can it have that? And it's running this red ensign. Well, actually, it's not a Union Jack unless it's run on the Jack stuff. It's a Union flag. And yes, although they kind of were in a Union at that period, which was about the middle of the 1600s, right, the 17th century, they still ran the Royal Navy at that period. Its official ensign was still the Red Ensign. So it's got that. Then, of course, you have got the Royal Standard to show that this is a basically a ship that is part of the uh, Royal Navy. You've got the, uh, the Red Flag, which shows that it's part of the Red Squadron. And also, there's no dots or anything on it. So this is the lead ship. This is the flagship of the Red Squadron. And then you've got this mizzen flag, which I'm not quite sure. That might just indicate we're in battle. I'll have to look that one up. But it's the only one that I don't know. But that's the flags. So if you're worried that, hang on, it's got a Union Jack. Well, it hasn't got a Union flag. Biggest misconception everywhere. They call it the Union Jack. It's only a Union Jack if it's on a Jack staff, which is back of the ship. Uh, apart from that, it's a Union flag. So there you go. You guys have been wrong all these years. No doubt the Poms will write in a whinge about that. But you um, look it up. Look it up. Prove me wrong. <laughs> okay. Now the sails, which are vac form, they're rather nice. They're not white, which is terrific, so you won't have to paint them. There's um, a few little dents, but they should pop out. Yeah. They're in surprisingly good nick. Normally, when you get one of these kits, the um, vac form sails have all fallen apart and you know deteriorated. Now, there's one break there, but you could you could probably easily fix that. That should be. So if you wanted to. You could use those. I will template off them, make my own cloth sails. So um, there'll be no need for that. And I'll probably have most of my sails basically furled. So, um, you know, I want to see all the details, especially my lower sails. But that's pretty what they've done here anyway. I always like the, the main sails to be furled. So you can see all the deck. You can see all the, what's going on in the deck, right? Otherwise, if you're running those main sails down, you block all the deck. There you go. Now, they packed not only... The box was sturdy and bubble wrap packed and ready to go and sealed in with brown paper. They bubble wrap packed in here. The bane of a lot of Airfix kits is that everything is in one bag, loose and suiciding in the box. And it generally means that the bag tears and if it's an old kit, parts fall out and they're never seen again. Now I've been lucky so far, I've got a lot of older Airfix kits. Um, where the bags have broken, but I've managed to do a complete part count and find them all and you know, solve the problem. It really wasn't it really wasn't quite as scary as I thought. Now I'll just lift this because underneath, to show that first, there's your rat lights. And a few little parts that are suicided. So I'll have to watch out for those. I'll have to watch out for those little parts. I'll go through and find those. But there's your rat lines, they've already done them for you if you want to use those. Now the annoying part is they're all black. Whereas the shrouds, the vertical ones, the long ones, they should be black. The horizontal ones should really be the fawn colour, right, the jute colour, because they're basically the, the runs that the sailors tread on to go up and down, so they should be tarred, right? If a line moves or it's going to be grabbed, it's not tarred. If a line is fixed, if a rope doesn't move, it's just locked in place, it's tarred, so that it can stay there for a long period. So that is the reason why some are one colour. Okay, well, what we need to do now is I need to clear this out of the way so that we can cut open this bag for the very first time because it is sort of sealed, although I know it has a hole, which is where these little parts are escaping. So I will carefully sort that out and then we can review the parts. 
I've got the bag out of the box carefully and I managed to rescue the parts that I found were loose. So a lot of it are Canon um, doors, well, you know, Canon port doors. Um, there's a, a piece there that looks like it's a, a crow's nest or something. There's lots of these little thin pieces here which I fear have fallen off something else. They're probably parts of the bottom of um, the channels of, of where the um, the dead eyes and uh, the bottom part of the rat line. So um, they may be able to be rescued and re-glued back on. Not a part that's hard to scratch if you have that issue. All right, let's open this bag. It would have been nearly 40 years since this bag was sealed up and this kit was put inside here. So this is a big thing. It's a big moment. There we are. Oops. There's a bit more cutting there, Harry. Right. There we go. So let's um, gingerly try and get things out. Of course, the hull halves, they look pretty well intact, which is good. You never know quite what you're going to uh, end up with. Just adjusting a few lights here. So. Um, there's a lot of detail on this kit. There is so much detail on this kit. It is. I guess all this is going to be gold leaf. All these cannon ports are surrounded by gold leaf. There's planking and wood effects, and they're actually lovely. I don't think they're overdone. I. Um, Looking at it, they look pretty reasonable. I mean, there's some kits from Revel, like I've got the Batavia, and the, um, the wood effects, giant grain. Like, you know, it must have been the land of the giants. The forest must have been huge because the knots and everything in it are, like, bigger than a person's head. Uh, but, no, this looks reasonable. This actually looks very realistic. I can't see any of the sinkholes. I don't see any flash yet. There may be some. I seem to have the rails are still stuck on. This is in pretty good nick, actually. The um, stem is still intact. When the bounty arrived, I, I've got an airfix bounty, it arrived, the, the stem had been snapped off. The guy didn't pack anything in the box, so the kit's just doing this, and, you know, and guys are throwing it around. It didn't do anything. You know, this is the thing. If you're going to send one of these kits in the mail, you've really got to pack it up. If I've posted things to other people, I have done the same. So these guys, I have packed all the inside with as much tissue paper and... Um, you know, bags of um, bubbles, bubble bags. So there we go. So that um, that looks really good. Sometimes you get a date on the inside. Uh, just part number six. The guys that designed these kits really knew their stuff back in the 60s. And to my way of thinking, some of these kits from the 50s and 60s of the sailing ships were still built and designed by guys that actually built probably wood models. And they knew their stuff. So, um, I don't know how much of the detail you're getting of that, but it is to my eye. I'll do some photos afterwards. To my eye, that is just wonderful. So much going on there. It is so lovely. Okay, that's one half. There's another half in here. Although I know this sprue wants to come out first. This is like doing, you know, archaeology or an autopsy. Be so careful as you pull things out. We have got, look at that, that's the anchor, the top of the anchor there. Uh, my, well, there's at least that half of my um, lanterns looks intact. Oh, this anchor seems to have moored itself here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm staying here, I'm not going anywhere. It's, um, well, it's proving quite troublesome, actually. It is proving quite troublesome. Maybe we can get it around there. There we go. So there's our anchor. So that, um, gorgeous big anchors. So that would attach to there. You probably can't see any of this. Do some close-ups in a sec. Okay, I'll just get the parts out. I'm having a general look. And then we'll get a, uh, a white background, I think. And we'll have a close-up look at a few things. So we've got that. So that's lanterns. And um, we've got a nameplate. We've got... That looks like part of the figurehead. Well, no, that's just a um, that's a cat's head. They sit on the um, sit on the bow on either side. They stick out. They point out either side of the bow, and you run things. Well, you run the anchor up and down on them. A few other things. 
there's um some mast heads yeah that's um that's fairly good it doesn't seem to have a lot lost from it so our first part in the box now yes there's a lot of things been broken off this sprue so we can uh, you can see there's a lot of obviously one of those was um, an anchor so I'd be inclined actually to ditch this sprue at this stage and just cut those two parts off because basically we're um, it's sort of superfluous and they're not parts that are going to be hard to form right probably should be using sprue cutters here up as usual I'll get the spray cutters in. Great plastic. This plastic is nice and firm. You know, if you've if you've built the new Airfix kits, they're great. They're brilliantly engineered. They're lovely. They go together well, and they're made of this shit soft curry plastic. I mean, if you sand it, it all disappears. And you know, trying to get exact edges on things. Luckily, they're molded well, so you don't have to do much cleanup. You just kind of there's no flash. They're clean, and away you go. But this old Airfix plastic, or in this case the Heller plastic, is fantastic. It is stiff, you know, which means at least your masts are not going to suffer from the bendy, droopy, you know, Viagra problem. Ship's boat. It looks in fairly good nick. Okay, moving along. Can we get the hull out now? Yes. So, and there's also the end, the stern. That is a fantastic piece. Look at the detail there. It is incredible. The heraldic arms, all this tiny filigree all around the outside. It is absolutely fantastic. And then these would all be the cabin windows, and they've all got lattice, um, would be lead work over them. And then down to this tiny piece in here. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is a work of art in itself. It will probably take me a week to paint that. It's beautiful. It's I would hasn't to say it is more detailed than the Wassa. And that's saying something because the, the Wassa is a beautiful kit. So that is lovely. So that will fit on the stern here. And our ship is going to be quite big. I mean they say 1180 I'll actually do a calculation for the exact size it is because so we the ship is known the ship size is known so that's um I'll put it here that's 400 millimeters long already and we don't have the bow sprit and the rest this will be half a meter long when it's finished which is a really good size for a model ship I mean, the little bounty kit I made, even with its bowsprit and everything, was only 300 long. So this is this basically 40% bigger. Even though at this scale, it should be, you know, it is literally half the size in scale. But this is such a big ship, so you can imagine, you know. I think I, I did a photo once of my Victory, 1100 Victory, similar scale to the Bounty, it was Bounty's 1110, but similar scale, and the Victory hull just dwarfs the Bounty. Bounty's a tiny little ship. You know, I've got all the sprues out of the bag because it's sort of getting tedious me pulling out one or the other. I'll just go show some of the main things of interest. Now, there are some complaints some people said to me, oh, the deck's rather boring, there's not much to it. Well, we are going to add stuff. I mean, I rather like that. It's simple and it's clean which means that I can paint that up and do my deck effects on it, or I could even buy a wood deck for this, because you can buy the little planking strips out of wood veneer. So you can actually completely cover this in wood veneer. Wouldn't that look good? That might be interesting. And the beauty is, because they've made it pretty well unadorned, that's going to be a fairly easy job to do. So I don't mind that. That's kept it simple. But there's going to be a lot added to that, and we'll go through that in instructions later. You get the uh, typical stand, this is the typical sort of stand you get from basically this period. And it's not bad, it'll hold in place, but I'll get some finals or some finials, as they call them. Some pedestals, some brass pedestals, and I will pedestal up mine. Now, the um, this is what I was worried about, is um, these guys. Well, this is the 
These are the dead eyes and the channels which run down to the hull, which hold the rat lines in place. And yeah, there's a number of the, basically, little channels here that are broken. So um, that's fine. That's probably what I'm finding in the kit there. They're not hard to fix. In fact, you can do them with chain because they, they basically were chain. At least I think they were or straps. I'll have to check for this period because they, they did change. So I need to sort of look those up and uh, have a look because, yeah, there's, there's none on there. That's And this was a very bad way. FX has done this and some of the other makers do this. They pack this thing with all these very fine fraggle bits on the end there and expect that in 20 years rolling around in this box, they're not going to snap off. I mean, really? <laughs> Grow a brain. So, um, okay, we've got these are obviously for up on the fighting platforms and the crow's nest and what have you. We're only missing one. So somewhere in here there'll be one. So that's not too bad. Not too bad. In no particular order because I'm just finding things as I go. And to make it easier so you can see things, there's all your gun ports. Although I think they'll be prettier on that side. Yes. Gun ports. And there's a lot of them. I mean, there's at least 100 guns on this ship. Which is a ship alive that period. So those gun ports all, all nicely done. And you've got both single opening and double opening gun ports on this ship. Your um, cannons. It's nice to see they are not in halves on the Heller kit the victory every cannon is in half and you've got to glue them together so you don't have to with this one all the cannons are single the ones here which are going to go on the lower decks where you don't you don't bother making a complete cannon with its with its cradle you know basically there's no point for that uh, they've just got the the barrel which will just poke out so that'll be let's have a look at the hull I'll explain what I'm talking about you know so up here we've got holes right when well, basically have a deck so it's worth having the carriages with the cannons so you can see all that but as you go to the lower decks well you wouldn't see them anyway it'll be all covered up by the upper deck so um you know on some kits they would have all the carriages in there but honestly you never see them so what the trick is you you black out that hole um, or you can cut it out if you like um, but then then you've got nowhere to mount the bloody cannon but yeah you, you normally just black out that hole then you paint your cannon whatever color you want put it in by the time you put the um the uh, the cannon port doors on and you rig them and everything it looks fine it looks fine there's no problem at all next thing I found are the masts and yards and they are fairly well detailed they're really nice normally I like to remove the bindings and um, do my own but they're actually I don't know if you can see we're sort of running out of light here Yeah, the bindings are actually quite nice. I'll do some photos at the end because it's very hard to do this while you're holding it in video. But that sprue seems complete. I, I can't see anything missing from it. So that's good. I mean, at least that sprue has edges which, which holds everything together. Unlike those other sprues which are sort of open-ended and so anything that's got a little pointy bit or a jaggedy bit, it'll break off! Gee, whiskers. Evix doesn't do that anymore, thank goodness. Oh, there's... That one's loose a bit. That one's kind of come a bit loose. Better be careful with that. Now, this chocolate brown plastic is very hard to, to shoot. So I'm trying to... I've overlit this to the absolute bloody max here. So you get an idea of detail. So, um, yeah, they couldn't have picked a worse colour, really. <laughs> but you might be able to see there the uh, beautiful detail of those um, laced windows and... All the gilding that's going to go on this this is um, at the stern this sits at either side these would be like officers quarters that sort of thing often their privy is in there too they uh, usually don't go forward to the heads with the common sailors they have uh, their their own poop deck as it would be moving to the last few sprues now there's um there's your basically your head rails and they're gilded as well I mean everything's gilded there's basically the heads yep that's the toilet on the ship that's the rudder what else you got there you've got some other wonderful little sort of gilded pieces um, you've got some um, basically uh, they're basically bulwarks I think basically they're um, what are they they're basically your 
as your decks get higher, uh, you have these little areas here that have got doors and windows that um, you know, basically lock off each deck. It's a wall, a bulwark. I think that's correct too. So there's a few things that have come off there, but I think one of those would be the other half that we just looked at of the um, of the side, the officer's quarters, and then there's these other little gilded pieces. So this sprue, there's not much left on this sprue either. That's got basically one of the um, top fighting platforms or crow's nests. Okay, a uh, ship's grate and something really tiny there. Could be the ship's bell. Not quite sure. And then there's a uh, belay point. Or oh, that actually might go at the bow where the, um, the bow sprit sits. That could be part of the belfry. We'll find out. So after that, it's just this pile here. So I'll have a quick look through that and see if there's anything I can pull out that's of interest. So this is all the bits, apart from what I've already found, that have basically broken off the sprues. So it's um, it's pretty scary. And as I say, there's, um, there's one set of dead eyes, which, um, yeah, there's quite a bit broken on there. And we, oh, we've only lost one of the channels off, but there's a dead eye broken there. And uh, so there's a bit of work to do there. It's actually a bit of flash on those too. So we might replace those completely and put wooden blocks in. Now the thing about these sailing ships is the size of things on them is not always dependent on scale. For instance, the, um, the pulleys on this are probably going to be about the same size as the bounty, even though the scale of this is much smaller. The reason is the size of the ship, the height of the masts and the thickness of the masts. So, for instance, the bounty is a small ship, so it'll have a narrow mast. So therefore, all the rigging is quite a thin. Like the, the main shrouds are always one-sixth, at least for the British ships, right? Are one-sixth the width of the main mast. And then the shrouds, the other mast are one-sixth. And then things get halved from there, like the rat lines are half that. And then all the other stays and things are percentages of that. And that's how you work them all out. You can actually, there's a formula to work out the width of everything. So from that, you can calculate all your block sizes. Now, if your ship, even though it's at half the scale, but physically that mast is twice as thick, right? So although this is a much smaller scale, but physically... We measure our mast, right? Our mast on our bounty was six millimeters. If I measure my mast on this and it's 12 millimeters wide, well, then all my ropes and all my pulleys are going to be twice the size they were on my bounty kit. And they'll still be in scale. They'll still be correct. The only thing that is consistent to scale is the height of the steps on the rat lines. They're always 400 millimeters in real life. A step, like steps don't change. Steps are consistent. So the height of the um, rat line steps on the bounty at 1100 are the same as the victory at 1100. Even though the victory is about three times the size, at that scale, they're going to be four millimeters. This one's nearly 1200, so the height of the steps of the rat lines will be two millimeters, just a bit over. That's about the only thing that scales. But in rigging, Basically, your blocks and your lines are dependent on the size of the model, the thickness of the mast. So as this is a big model, and what I'm trying to say is, this actually will be easier to rig than that bounty, even though it's twice, twice as, um, it's basically half the scale, right? Because it's nearly one and a quarter, one and a third the size. Interesting, isn't it? All right. So, um, oh, here's a lovely piece. Lovely piece, I think... I think that goes at the bow. Um, there's a beautiful little piece that goes at the bow there. So that is lovely. That has a name and it's escaped me. I'll, I'll try and remember what that's called. Beautifully gorgeous. This will be in the photos at the end because I found it's just too hard to try and show you things. Again, more um, fighting platforms or crow's nest if you want to call them. Okay. Um, we've got ship's boats and we've got inserts to our ship boats. So um, they'll make up nicely. Uh, I may have to put little rudders and things on like I did with the bounty. You'd never know. There's a cat's a cat's head, which, um, again, is gilded. That'll be in the photos. And that's for basically pulling up your anchor or pulling up a lifeboat, that sort of thing. So there's that piece that fell off. I know it's a piece of gilded stuff that fell off there. There's another one. Oh, there's all kinds of things. Oh, there's um, one of my lanterns. There's the other of my lanterns. And there's... The third. So there's all my land and halves that were missing because I only had half of them on that other sprue. That's good. There's another anchor. More boat bits. 
there's um, there's that missing set of dead eyes. But I said I might just cut cut off the channels, cut off the dead eyes, just use the channel board to attach to the model, and then I'll do all this with actual cordage and wooden um, blocks. So more of these, more of these. Don't know. We'll see if it's um. If they're not too bad. Now that I've learned how to cast things, if there's only a few of these missing, well, I could actually cast that part out of Milliput, which I successfully did in my last video. So, yep. And there we go. Bit more of anchors. Boat, boat, anchor head. Um, that looks like a set of steps. Yep. That's a set of um, spiral stairs. Huh. Mast heads. Mast heads. Now that looks a little bit of a worry because that looks like it's snapped off something. So I may have to look. That actually looks like part of the bow. This is the other half that I didn't really have a good look at. And yeah, there's a crack in my um, my bow. It's a neat, an absolute neat snap. And it'll fit in. Whoops. It will fit in perfectly. So that is easily fixed. But yeah, this is the thing parts loose in a kit airfix and this is what happens they will suicide i mean 20 years of rattling around something's going to break and um, usually it's the stem that's not too bad because a lot of that gets hidden because you've got your you've got your head rails in here there's other things going on a little bit of putty that should fix up rather nicely thank goodness thank goodness so there you are i'll get um bass the cat onto that she'll be able to repair that so mm, okay only one breakage of major so far all right that's basically all the bits i'll put the last of the little pieces in here and we'll go through the instructions so here's your little instruction fold out booklet <laughs> they give you a lovely blurb here which gives you the history about it that it was first launched in um what was it chatham in 1670 and it was one of the finest ships of the line of the 17th century yes so um, goes on about that. She was basically the um, successor to the Royal Sovereign. I have that kit as well. Royal Sovereign is a rather gorgeous ship. So I'll tell you here, she was 131 feet long. So we'll be able to work out the scale size for that. 100 guns, um, goes on and on and on. Then they talk about the, um, the model, which is in the Science Museum in South Kensington. So that um, model gives you basically the reason that they could do a kit so accurate that they could actually measure up that Admiralty model. Let's try and fold this open then, see what we can find. This is really, we'll be going backwards here. This is, as I showed you before, those those rat lines that we found in the kit. I probably won't use those, I'll, I will do my own. They do give you the fixing points, they let you know how to do all that, so it's lovely in detail. Even show you here how you would tie off against those pretend dead eyes. I'm going to replace all those wooden dead eyes. I'm going to do a nice job. Gives you a basic rigging guide. It's not bad actually. It's not bad at all. You've got your basically your fixed rigging is correct and you've got a very simplified version of the running rigging. But you could still build the model from that and get a very good result. So that's fine. I'll, I'd probably take it a little bit further. Take it a little bit further. And then yeah, there's your sails and explains it and how and where all your flags go. So that's good. Uh, they even tell you the sizes to use for your cotton so there might have been cotton in this kit originally because the way they're sort of going on about it as though they're indicating it was there but it must have fallen out over the years or someone's stolen it just to go and darn their socks so the other side of this is again we're working backwards the end and the instructions so that's your painting guide as we discussed before now the instructions it's going to be big We'll, we'll try and do this in two halves. So you basically build up the hull as you would. Although the very first thing you can do is paint everything, right? Because you have so much detail. So you're going to paint up that entire stern. That's going to take you a week or two. You're going to paint up the hull halves. That's going to take. You know, you're going to spend a month on this, at least I would, painting all the gilding, getting that all together, and getting the wood deck effect. You know, it, it could even be two months before you even start assembling because you've got a hundred cannons to make up and clean and all the rest of it and you've got all these gun ports every one of them's got to be gilded and all your covers are going to be done there's a lot of prep work to do before you even get to assembling assembling is going to be the easy part of this 
And being an airfix kit, especially from this period, it should fit together perfectly. They really, you know, all the ones that I've done, all the white box early kits, they all fit brilliantly. And you haven't got lots of flash. You haven't got moulds are old and warped. You're dealing with the original spec done with the best plastic at the best time. And they usually go together really well. But there's very detailed instructions here. All these gun ports all get dealt with differently. They have slightly different doors on them. There's single doors. There's doors that open this way, doors that open that way. As you can see, there's um, FGH. There's, there's a whole lot of different ways. So there's a lot to take care of. Our boats, our ship boats, have got oars, but they haven't got rudders. I'll scratch build some rudders for them. There's some gratings. There's some um, railing pieces that go in. That's the belfry. Making up your cannons. Lots of stairs because you've got all those different levels with those um, those gilded bulwarks and uh, there's 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 just so much detail in this kit. All right, so moving to the second half, you've got belay points here that go in. That's where you're going to tie your ropes off to, through there. Some models like to tie off their belay points now and and run great big long threads and leave them sort of hanging around the model and then they're easier to thread up through. You can do that but I, I have a trick to doing that which I showed in the bounty whereas I actually do a very simple knot on there which I can pull through with a with a bead and needle and then I glue on the actual like figure eight or the rounded um, belay bit of rope so it's a bit of a cheat. You'll, you'll never notice the difference. All right, here's this piece. Oh, I forget what that's called again. It should come to me. It's annoyed that my brain knows so much, but then I forget. And this is this lovely piece here that sits at the bow. The duck will know. The duck was painting one on his victory, actually. And I've forgotten mine. How hopeless of me. Yeah, anyway, that bit, that pretty little bit there. Yes. Forecastle. This is the forecastle. So, yes, that's the, the basically the, the forecastle piece there. Mm. Ship's rails. Go in there, so that will cover up a bit of that problem with the broken hull. Cat's heads go on. Actually, I even say cat head here. They actually are giving you some of the names of parts. I wish they'd do more. I like it when a kit tells you what each thing is. And it's in some ways, that's a good point with Tamiya kits, even though I'm not a fan of Tamiya. But at least instructions, they say this is a knob and this is a bratchet and this is a widget, which is rather good, you know. Lantern, yes, well, we know they're lanterns. I wonder if there's a way to make those lanterns so I can actually make them clear and then you can actually see through them or even put lights in them. That'll be lovely. So there's your um, there's your officer's quarters going on. There's your rudder, all the rest of it. More cannons, more things. And then you move on to all the masts and all the sails. And there's quite a few, quite a few. Although it's a basic square rig ship from that period, the only difference to something like the Bounty is you've got on the bowsprit there is another tiny little mast. They had this forward one. So they ran a sail off a mast, which actually pops off the bowsprit. And at the stern here, rather than having a, a spanker boom that goes back with a sort of a trapezoidal shaped sail, that, um, that boom goes all the way across. So that yard goes all the way across, and you've got a triangular lanteen shaped sail. That's about it. That was the, the style for that period. And here, you've got... Uh, dead eyes and they run on a curved rail so um, I'd want to keep that but again I'll be replacing those dead eyes and the um, the ropes between them that will be all done with cotton and with wood blocks so there we go you hear the crows today carrying on kookaburras were going berserk this morning as well it's almost like being back on the farm although I'm living right in the middle of the city of Brisbane but I say it is rather pretty here there's a lot of trees I do have a nature park close by. So yeah, uh, assembly, typical for all masks. So they give you one, everything's going to assemble the same way. And knowing airfix, it should fit. And then finally, all your masks go in. And all your channels go on. So we'll be paying particular attention to all of those because there will be some repair. But I don't think it's quite as bad as I feared. I will do a complete park count and see if I actually am missing anything. But it seems to be it seems to be all there. I mean, I was lucky. Royal Sovereign was worse. There was no bag. All the parts were just running around in the box. And I was thought, well, it's going to be a disaster. But it took me a couple of hours of going through the whole thing, finding every part on the plan. Because when you don't get a sprue guide with the FX, you never do. So you have to go through the, um, the whole instruction, and you have to go part by part and try and find them all. 
Luckily they're all numbered and they're all fairly distinctive and eventually I found every single part so that was great. And then I'll bag everything up for posterity although I would really like to start on this soon. Although I said I'm going to build that Napoleon first. Yeah, well, we'll build the Napoleon because that actually would be a much easier build than this. Napoleon is a lot easier to paint and um, it's a lovely kit. But um, this Prince, let's see if we can get to this later next year. It would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But as I say, this would be a kit where there won't be much constructing. It's going to be all painting, 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 painting. <laughs> all right, well, what I'll do is, because the parts have been very hard to shoot uh, under the lights here, is I will try and put them on a nice white background and um, photograph them as best I can. And we'll run the end of this video with a whole lot of photographs of all the lovely parts that are in this kit. Well, not all of them, just sort of one of each to give you a feel and idea of the detail. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's probably been a long one. I don't know. I seem to have been filming here for hours, <laughs> just thoroughly engrossed in this kit. But this HMS Prince is, you know, this is the unicorn of Airfix um, sailing ship kits that were molded in the 60s. And I have one, and I think it's fantastic. All right, that's it. Please comment subscribe, like, just be nice about it all. Go to my Patreon channel if you'd like to see more of these videos early and without adverts, and plus see a lot of behind the scenes action, which is what I do for my Patreon viewers, for as little as $1 a month. But that's it for now. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Denny.